So, uh, what do you think? Is this a substitution? Or this kind of looks like uh, one of those trig, little trig insertions. By the way, I uh, have kind of a mea culpa. Uh, nobody, nobody said anything about it on that handout. Maybe nobody got to it. It was a problem on there. I went home and started working on it. It was like, oh my, I can barely do this. My students probably can't do it. You want to know which one that was? I'm going to like this, but different. The one that, like the integral of square root of square plus four, I think. I mean, it, it, it looks like you want to use that trig identity tangent squared plus one equals secant squared, but uh, that doesn't work out very well. I think it works a little better is if you know that there's a similar identity with uh, hyperbolic functions. I think I mentioned those, but we haven't already done those. And even that, when you get to the end, you have to find an inverse of a hyperbolic. Which is, I'm sorry, nobody seems to have suffered though, so I don't feel too bad. I just sometimes, you know, unexpectedly, uh, integrals are really hard or even impossible. And you know, you find a way around that. Uh, there are tables you can look things up in, so if it's not in the table, you think, uh oh, it's not so easy. We'll, we'll look at one of those in a minute. All right, so what would be the substitution here? Well, we want this to go away, right? So we're thinking like 2 sine of u, right, because then I'll square, I'll get 4 sine squared and it'll all be, everybody will be happy. So the x is 2 cosine u du. And what does this become? On the top we have 2 cosine u u, and on the bottom we have or sine squared u times the square root of 4 minus 4 sine squared u. And the whole purpose of doing this was that this is 4 times 1 minus sine squared. So it's 4 times cosine squared. So here we have cosine u u. Or sine squared, but here we end up with two cosine u, which looks like we're on the right track because then you can kind of cross this off, and go back at one quarter over sine squared u. But that's just one quarter cosecant. Yeah, cosecant squared. Now, at this point, this point maybe you could look at the uh, text again and see what it says about secant squared and whatever. But uh, I think this is a perfectly terrible. We haven't really talked about tables. It's a chapter that the department says we don't have to look at. It, it, it's perfectly appropriate to cheat a little here. By the way, I, I, I made a, a, a decision about something. I decided that uh, what I should do for future quizzes and tests Let's take these last pages of the book, 3 through 19 through 10. Just copy them. You can use them like as a cheat sheet. Because um, 
we are trying to teach you techniques and stuff, but, uh, you know, I don't expect you to memorize seven pages of integrals. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to take a look here and see under the trig functions, is there anything that ends up as a cosecant square? cosecant squared. So this becomes one quarter. Got a short term memory loss here. Whoa. Cotangent. Uh, the minus sign. All right. Uh, if you went ahead and figured this out yourself, you probably don't need to take this class. <laughs> Uh, yeah, plus our constant. But we're not done. We really want this in terms of x. So how are we going to do that? Cotangent equals adjacent over the hypotenuse. Hmm? Cotangent uh, e mu equals the adjacent over hypotenuse, which is sine of root of 4 minus x squared over Is that x. what it is? Yeah. Okay. So now we want to be able to replace these with x's. So first thing to know is x over 2 is the sine of u. You're going to need that. Then to get the cosine of u, if I take this, square it, Subtract it from 1 and find the square root. What do I mean by that? If I take this, square it, subtract it from 1 and find the square root, I'm going to get the cosine, right? So same thing here. So now I just have to plug in negative 4, uh, square root of 1 minus square over 4, and on the bottom I just have x over 2, and uh, you can make this look prettier, you definitely could. Pull a 1 fourth out of here, maybe, but that's, that's, basically, that's basically the answer. Other questions? Yes. Can you do number 31 on page 394? No, I'm having a slow day. Coffee is not, not doing it anymore. 394, which number? 31. 31. Use, oh, I can do that. Use long division. Does anybody here not remember what they mean by long division on a polynomial? You don't, you know. Okay, well I'm gonna do one just in case. It's just like long division. No, it's not exactly. It's very similar to long division numbers, which I've heard people say that they don't did, they, did anyone here not learn long division in grammar school? High school? Grade school. Grade school. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference? Okay. Anyway, uh, you know, I've heard people say, well, we have calculators now for that. It's just a waste of time until you get to this. So x cubed plus 4 divided by x squared plus 4. Uh, it usually helps to you know, kind of spread this out. 
So, okay, x squared into x cubed, that's x. So we have x cubed plus 4x. We subtract, we have negative 4x plus 4. Oh, but now this x squared is greater than that, so we can't divide anymore. So it's just a uh, remainder negative 4x plus 4. So our integral, x cubed plus 4 over x squared plus 4 dx just becomes integral of x plus our remainder is 4x plus 4 over our divisor, x squared plus 4. Okay, so that's that's what the division was about. From here, well, we've got two parts. This is crazy easy. Is this a definite integral? I don't think so. No, it's next to the uh, simplest one. Hmm? It's next to the simplest one, so whatever. All right. So, uh, so clearly the first part is x squared over 2 plus this integral, negative 4x plus 4 over x squared plus 4. I can see where this could, could throw you. I don't know that we, we saw something exactly like this. Uh, it might help to separate this. This is the integral of negative 4x over x squared plus 4 plus 4 over x squared plus 4 integral. Now this one's pretty straightforward because the derivative of x squared is 2x, right? So if I write this as negative 2, 2x, then this is just going to be what? Well, I could say the absolute value of x squared plus 4, but that's redundant since x squared plus 4 has to be positive. So really, this all boils down to this one, this one integration problem. And this one, you have to look at that and go, that looks like something. That looks like something familiar. Looks like right. this is the inverse tangent. So uh, the way to, way to to get there is what the substitution, right? Where we we end up with this being one somehow, right? So it looks like if I were to say Oh, do I need to? Yeah, as well. Okay, so Okay, so integral four over x squared plus four dx. So I want my x to be two u. So dx equals. So, plug 
this in over here, and that's your solution. X squared over 2 minus 2 all of this plus 8 tangent inverse of x over 2. Unless I messed up one of these constants, which I've been doing a lot lately. You might want to find a derivative and check. Especially if it's in the heat of the quiz or a test. Okay, is, is that helpful? Okay, any other questions on the homework or the handout? We're first. Uh, we also do number six on page 393. 393. This was a hard problem set, wasn't it? I had to spend a lot of time with it. I, I guess I want to show you. So, uh, let's see, this is 5.6, isn't it? Is this 5.7? Yeah. So, uh, so, you know, when I'm correcting your work, I have a little correction sheet, and it's like my own work. It takes lots of paper to invest in paper companies. Do you have a question? Uh, I have a different concern. Like oh, I told you, I probably made an error. I, I can feel it when I, when I do. Go ahead, what's, what's your answer? Can you do me a favor? Come, come right on the board. That way. Right. Go, go ahead. Oh, you got it right. Yeah. Oh, I can just look at it. Well, I'm just four off. <laughs> Uh, Bruna has a, you have a two here, right? A two here, right? Well, does anyone see where I am? Uh, if you put the four in, it's eight to you over oh. four you squared. So, so the eight turns into a two and the fours cancel out. So that the two to you over Wait, you does, squared. Does this four and these? Yeah, they'll cancel. Oh, isn't that what I said? That's 2LN. Yeah, it's the same thing. You can't read my handwriting? Oh, sorry. Yeah, same. <laughs> yeah, same. Okay. All right. Thank you for helping me out there. Okay, which would, what was the next number you wanted, Matthew? Uh, number six. Number six. I can do the hard stuff, I just can't do the easy stuff, right? All right. Uh, this is too complicated, I'll just erase this for a minute. I had a French uh, professor in college, and he used to, you know, I'm not saying anything inappropriate here. You know, the French and food, and, right? And it's kind of a cultural thing. And uh, he would he would say, "This smells like blah blah blah." You know? Tell me, which number was it? Six. Six. Yeah. This really smells like a certain double angle. I mean, this looks to me like I'm going to rewrite it. It's one fourth two sine x cosine x. Okay, right. These are the same. But this, this is what. So, uh, didn't we do 
do something early, or where we uh, figured out what the integral of sine squared was. That was. Uh, I'm just being lazy. Sine squared is 1 minus 2 cosine of x. Cosine of 2, 2x. Two okay, now it looks pretty simple, doesn't it? to reinforce the idea that when you're doing these problems, it's a good idea, if you can. You know, we've, got, we've got this marvelous technology here. We figure out how to make it work. Sine x. So that, there's what, what the calculator came up with, and we want to compare that with pi by 8. Oh, rats. <laughs> what did it do? Must have been something. I seem to be off by a factor of 2. One quarter, let's go back. Is that the right thing? Yeah, that's the right thing. Oh, hold on. Uh, hmm? uh, when you change the sine to a square to 1 minus the sine for x, do you have to put a half in the front? So it's a half angle rule? Or the oh, thank you. Yeah. We picked up another 2 here. So it's 8. So this is 16. See, it was really good. I checked. Because, of course, Pi divided by 16 is exactly the number I was hoping for. 
Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to encourage you to do these problems this way. It's .1963454A is definitely not 5 or 16. It's just very close, and it's close enough that it can tell me whether I'm on the money or not. Um, I encourage you to do that during quizzes and tests and other, you know, and, and if, if, if you're integrating something in a physics class and it's not some theoretical equation, it's a measurement, boom, this is, this is the way to do it. Um, okay. Uh, I think Angie, you, you can ask a question. Is it something we've already, or somebody, we've already done? How's, how's all that? Is that okay so far? All right, any other questions on this homework? This stuff is tricky, you know. Um, if, if I give you something where you have to, on a quiz or a test that you have to work it out, um, I'm definitely going to give you a fair amount of time to beat your head against it. Um, and uh, do yourself a favor and show me, you know, your. If you just have dead ends, show me your dead ends, then at least I can see. Um, some people don't work well and under pressure and you know, come within a hair of the answer and it's not right. Back. Go crazy. Don't do that. I mean, if, if, you, if you're on the right track, you'll get most of the credit for it. This isn't a, I really don't like the idea of well, actually, I do like the idea of math as kind of a speed sport, but not in class, you know. I mean, when I have a competition, that's fine. Uh, but here we're just trying to learn this stuff. Okay, I guess, I guess we'll move on. Uh, I'm going to erase the board so you can have, you can have a second to think about it. today is you know, right along the lines of what I was talking about. It's a little bit of a kind of a step backward in a way from mathematics towards uh, you know, kind of theoretical math, practical math. We're going to learn about, we're not going to really learn about it because we've already learned about it. We're going we're gonna to put, put it all together idea of approximation. Uh, approximating integrals using your calculator or some other method. And uh, the first question is why? Why do we want to do that? We've got this beautiful method. Uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus says you find an antiderivative, you, you, you now have a function which gives you the area. So why do we need why do we need to look into approximate integration? Well, the book suggests two reasons. Uh, sometimes you do not have an antiderivative. So example you come across is this one, e to the minus x squared. I think we've already talked about it a little. Uh, it's important because statistics you run across it. This is the famous bell-shaped curve. Like a bell, it has no end. It just keeps going off into infinity. But um, Sometimes 
defining certain portions of the area of this are important. You want to compare your survey results to a bell curve. You want to know what percentage should be between A and B and so forth. Uh, but you can, you can evaluate this with your calculator, which is probably all you need to do if you're in the social sciences or in business or is that social science. So let's just take a quick look. E to the minus, I'm just going to say x times x. And let's take a look. We have a curve. I'm going to I'm going to zoom out because I don't want to get to there here. And uh, I just think it's uh, one of those interesting things in, in uh, mathematics that just find the area under it. And we know it goes to zero, not to zero, it never gets to zero, but it it's very small, but so we can just say, let's just say minus three, three. And uh, it's kind of a weird looking number, 1.77, unless you get this interesting idea. Square it, and then it looks a little more familiar. The area under that curve turns out to be oops, turns out to be the square root of pi. And yet we have no way to calculate it in this class, at least, except by using our technology. Uh, now, the irony is the book suggests this is a reason to do what we're, we're going to look at. And I, I just feel that that was true 30 years ago, but it's not true today. I have this calculator. It's just a number I want out of it. And everybody here is dexterous and, and uh, poke in the formula and figure this number out. Um, so there has to be another reason to do what we're going to do. And the reason is because some of you either scientists or social scientists are going to let's get rid of this again. You're going to do a survey and you're going to you're going to come back with data points. And these data points are a rate. And you're going to want to know what this area is. And what's, what's the proper way to do that? Uh, you can't plug the, your function into a calculator because you don't have a function. You have, you have uh, data points. I guess you could try and model a function. That would be one way to do it. But uh, then you're doing and two approximations. You're approximating what this function is, and then you're, I guess, you get exactly the area of an approximated function. Uh, but the other more direct route is to uh, go back to what we were looking at when we first, let's see, I'm going to draw this function again. When we first started looking at integrals, which is you want an area from a to B, and you can divide this up into rectangles, and you can use the, the left point rectangle rule, uh, get an approximation, or 